Thunderdome Boxing Talk, Anthony here. All right, you know, John David Jackson, uh, he tends to speak his mind pretty freely. You know, he's, he's probably, he's probably my favorite trainer to listen to speak. Um, you know, he really knows how to get his point across. And the guy just has a wealth of knowledge, man. A wealth of knowledge. You know, he comes from... The, uh, not only the school that he comes from, but, I mean, he's a champion in his own right, first of all. So, you know, he knows boxing firsthand, championship-level boxing firsthand. Um, he was trained by the best. He was trained to train by the best. Well, some of the best. Uh, basically, the best guys that were around in his era and, and this era, you know, like from... Eddie Futch and uh, Georgie Benton, um, you know, and he's worked with so many guys. I mean, Brother Nazim and Freddie Roach and, you know, so many just other bright boxing minds. They maybe aren't even, you know, very famous, I guess, um, in the media anyway, you know. Think about the, I think it was the Pascal fight. Um, B Hop. I know he worked with B Hop a couple times, but B Hop brought John David Jackson in along with, and he brought Freddie Roach in uh, along with his own corner. I mean, they were just like extra, you know, he had like an all star lineup team of coaches, uh, which almost seemed like, you know, too many chefs in the kitchen, but, you know, hey, uh, can, can work out sometimes, I guess. Um, but Eddie, Eddie Futch, you know, Roach and Jackson come from that same school. You know, the Eddie Futch to the George Benton, then you got Roach. And, you know, they're like the, the branches of that tree. And they both have a wealth of knowledge from all those guys. Now, they both have their own way of teaching it. Uh, and their own styles and everything, and you know I like that. Um, <clears throat> I was just talking to before I get into the things that he said because I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do something about you know uh, uh, obviously uh, what John David Jackson said. Um, some some questions on the fight, a uh, bit of a resume comparison, some other things. I was just talking with Jamie October, shout out Jamie October, and I believe it was Precise Presenter on one of the interviews with John David Jackson uh, in the comment section, talking with them about, uh, they were talking about, well, John David Jackson in the interview was talking about uh, Kovalev using like Greco-Roman wrestling in training, and Jackson basically said, hey, if it keeps the fighter happy, no problem, let him do it. You know, and I'm sure he's had other fighters wrestle, but uh, October was pretty surprised that he didn't, you know, use wrestling uh, in his gym that much. Whether it's you know standing on your feet and just wrestling around, uh, learning how to you know get out of clinches or clinch and hold, whatever, it, it works. Uh, you know, you, a, a lot of muscles, your core muscles, your strength in general works. Basically, every muscle. Um, I know in my gym, we used to have a wrestling mat, a huge wrestling mat where we would do collegiate style, you know, wrestling. Uh, it was great for endurance and, you know, keeping you, your mind quick and, uh, you know, strength, um, speed. Uh, it was great. You know, it was great. Uh, I'd say outside of boxing, wrestling's probably the, the most exerting sport, you know, you, it really takes a lot out of you, you really have to push yourself and be in the, you know, phenomenal shape, uh, to truly compete, um, so I, I always did it, you know, I loved it as a, as a tool, um, yeah, I was also surprised that he didn't, Jackson didn't, you know, implement, you know, some kind of wrestling, uh, we used to also do, you know, stand on the feet type shit and wrestle around, uh, you know, like you're in clinches and pushing each other back and, you know, we're working every muscle. Um, 
and I was I was thinking, you know, and that's because Jackson is all about the art of boxing, you know, and the art of teaching boxing, and that's why we have seen such a crazy development um, in Kovalev. You know, like if you remember when Hopkins beat the shit out of Pavlik at the end of it, um, he kept telling him, he, he said, you know, remember he went up to him, he said, man, you need to bend your knees, you need to fight more like a black man, um, instead of like stiff and just on the one, two, three, you know, and uh, he gave him like a little lesson, uh, but in the ring he gave him a fucking real lesson. Um, well, Kovalev is being taught all that. Right? And you even heard Hopkins say, you know, he's bending their knees, starting to fight more like a black man, and that's from Jackson teaching him that style, um, teaching Kovalev so much more, you know. Um, he's about the art of two men standing on their feet, fighting with their fists. What can you do? You know, what... How can you make your body the, you know, while boxing with just your hands and the rolls, how can you make yourself into the ultimate weapon? You know, flat out. Um, what's the, the best things you can do? And teaching them. He, you know, he's more, that's more his thing. You know, uh, I understand the wrestling thing. He probably should implement it. And I'm sure he's had other fighters do it too. But, you know, he was... Uh, and, and Virgil Hunter to Ward, <clears throat> you know, Virgil's another guy who thinks. Uh, he's more of a thinking man. Uh, he's a good trainer, real good trainer, in fact. Um, I learned uh, some things just from listening to him. Uh, unfortunately, you know, and it's not, not unfortunately, but I, I just don't think he's on the level of uh, Freddie Roach or, or John David Jackson. I don't. Um, you know, they always saw, let's say, like, you know, the word cerebral when they talk about Virgil Hunter. Right? I, I, I guess he's cerebral, but, you know, I, that shit don't matter, man. You know, John David Jackson's cerebral, too, but you got to be able to, you know, really, really show people the art. Like, the guys who came over, to, like, Andre Ward, I think that, I think he would have had success with pretty much anyone. Anyone that was decent. You know, not so bum, but anyone who was decent, man. Because when guys go to Virgil, I don't see much of a difference. You know, he don't, I don't ever see him really teaching anyone anything. Um, he sure didn't teach Berto shit. Um, I can't believe they just basically threw fucking Berto under the bus for the Mayweather payday, but uh, Amir Khan, I mean... I don't know, man. I think Amir Khan was better when he was with Roach. I do. Like, when Amir Khan was fighting, like, uh, Zab Judah, you know, and even Danny Garcia. He just happened to get clipped. And because he gets clipped, he's, it's, it's not my fault. I, I gotta point the finger. That's what some people do. We talk, I talked about this in a previous video, remember? People really never can take fault for their own mistakes. Um, and it wasn't even really a mistake that that uh, Colin made, you know, but, you know, blame had to go elsewhere, let's put it that way. Um, I don't know. The con that was fought Zab Judah, in my eyes, I think that was the best best con we ever saw. Um, that sure wasn't, and I know, I don't think the one that fought Colazzo was better. Not at all. Um, I, I don't know. I think John David Jackson's a much better much, much better. Um, and then you you also got Don Turner. You know, you got Don Turner over there, and you got uh, that uh, the Russian coach, uh, shit, what's his name? The Russian coach that um, Sergey brought in. You know, uh, so you got a lot of guys over there that know so fucking much about boxing. Um, and Andre is one guy. One guy, Virgil Hunter, you know, who, you know, that's just Virgil, you know, um, 
you remember when Virgil had Khan and Jackson had Algieri? I remember saying in my pre-fight vid, what the hell is Jackson going to do for Algieri? I guess it's, I said it's probably the best guy he could go to. We'll sharpen him up a bit, teach him a couple tricks or two, but Algieri's Algieri. Um, but, you know, and Khan's Khan. I, I, I expected a Khan blowout. But then we get fucking a completely different fighter. One camp. A completely different fighter. And he fought very good in that style in one camp. Uh, he was like, like I called him like the, the generic margarito, you know, because um, he fought in that margarito style, just didn't have the power. Um, and look, he put up a hell of a fight. Hell of a fight. And why do you think that is? Because Jackson knew if we try to box this boxer, we are going to get school. And they were. And they were. So what did he do? He flipped the script completely in one camp. I mean, I saw more improvement in Algeria in one camp than I've seen with Khan the whole fucking time he's been with Virgil. Like, during that fight, Virg didn't, couldn't tell him anything to, to help him. You know, that fight was close. You know, some people think Khan lost. I thought Khan won, uh, but it was close. You know, and he wasn't giving him no solid advice. None. You know, if, if, if Algeri could have punched, if that was like Margarito, if he could have punched, Khan was done. He, was, he would have been done. But he couldn't bust an egg. But however, he's still scoring points. You know, Virgil should have had something. You know, use your fucking feet and turn this guy and hook him. You know, turn, turn him, hook him, and straight right. And then use the foot. End with the jab. So you're right back in position. But no, never, you know. But anyway. John David Jackson was talking about like how um, Ward would uh, when he turned pro. You know, he said he was talking about how he fought as a child. You know, basically the teen, late teens, uh, in the amateurs as a light heavyweight. He was basically saying when he was in the Super Six, <clears throat> he was already a natural light heavyweight, but he kept himself very small so he could fight at super middleweight, like how B-Hop did at 160 uh, for the longest time. You know, B-Hop could have moved up way earlier. I remember Emmanuel Stewart um, talking about how B-Hop kept himself so small and, you know, ate very little just to, you know, stay small uh, and be able to fight at 160. And he was saying, you know, B-Hop can can move up at any time, and then when he did move, I remember him saying, yeah, B-Hop could have moved up, you know, years ago. Um, I thought he would have just went to 68, but the, the big jump was the big jump, because if you remember, look at um, the Hopkins-Trinidad fight. Look how much bigger Hopkins was than Tito. And yeah, I know Tito's a little guy moving up, so he's going to be a little smaller, but it was like a total, total fucking, like, like almost mismatch. You're like, why are these two guys in the same ring? You know, it was close to Cotto. And, it was about the same as Cotto and Canelo, really. Um, like, when you really look at it, the size was just ridiculous, you know, ridiculous. And he's saying that Ward was doing the same thing as... Um, Hopkins, but now Ward never fought a smaller guy moving up, so you never got to see that big of a difference. But in, in fight night weights, if anyone has fight night weights on Ward, I could find one. I only found one fight night weight on Andre Ward. I'm talking like ever, um, all the way back past Shelby Pudwell. I went like three fights back. I couldn't find a fight night weight on any of them. You know, he fought Shelby Pudwell at a light heavyweight catchweight, 172, right? And he fought someone else at a light heavyweight catchweight before that. Um, so he was big, you know, and why did he fight at that catchweight? Because he didn't feel like cutting all the way down to 68. So clearly he was big. He could have 
you know, easily, whoop, filled right out, just like Hopkins. Now, I, uh, yeah, fight night weights. If anybody can get fight night weights for Andre Ward, please share them. Uh, please share them. Uh, because I can only find the Chad Dawson one where he was 176. Um, and I want to know if he's ever come in over 180. You know, because like Lucian, a lot of super middleweights come in over 180. Uh, Butte comes in 180, 182, 183. Uh, he has, he has. Um, and Kovalev, you know, before he hooked up with uh, uh, Quan Paxton, really, he was fighting at um, like 181, 183. I mean, he was only putting on, you know, six, seven, eight pounds. He wasn't even putting 10 pounds on for the longest time. I have his fight night weights. Uh, I'll show you. Um, yeah, Warden Dawson. Warden was 176. That's the only fight night weight I could find. Why is that? You know, that makes me curious. Um, but when uh, Kovalev fought that uh, Salak, he was 181 pounds. When he fought Agnew, uh, one of my favorite Kovalev fights. He was a 183 um, when he hooked up with uh, when he was fighting Bihop, hooked up with uh, Quan Paxton. He immediately went up to 188. Then Pascal 189. Muhammad, though, he dropped the whole way back down to 183. Um, now, I talked to Quan a few times. I even did a few videos with him for you. Um, he told me he was trying to get, um, Kovalev up to, like, 190 to where, you know, because a lot of the other light heavyweights come in at, like, 189, 190, 188, you know. So he wanted to get Kovalev up there with them, um, uh, because he was coming, he was coming in so light. <laughs> he probably don't like cutting weight or something, but he's fighting very small. You know, he was a small, a very small, um light heavyweight. Uh, that's the truth. Um, so they're not, there's not really that much of a difference, you know. Uh, think of his last fight. He was 183. Dawson, he was 176. It's only a six pound difference, man. Only a six pound difference. And I guarantee you Ward has fought at a higher weight than that. I guarantee it. I guarantee you there's fights where he put on 13, 14 pounds. Um, and that would pretty much be the same weight as Kovalev, you know, for his last fight. And he probably weighed that much in the Super 6. So if that, if you could find those weights, I'd like to see if what Jackson is saying is bullshit or it's true, you know. Um, but, you know, we all know he did drain him the shit out of himself or shrink down as much as he could because he turned pro at middleweight. 160. He had like his first 10 fights at 60. Then, you know, and he was like 21 at the time. In the Super 6, well, he moved up to middleweight long before the Super Middleweight, long before the Super 6. But then by the time he's in the Super 6, it's like. He was probably like 25, 26, 27, something like that. 28. He was around 26, I think. Um, but either way, from 21 at, at 160, when you're holding your weight down, and you're really bigger than 160, but then when you're... So he's really even a super middleweight then. Um, then, you know, he couldn't do that no more. So he went up, and like I'm saying, he had light heavyweight catchweight fights in there. Um, super middleweight uh, at 25, you know he grew, you know, from 21 to 25, men grow, um, well, it's that simple, man, I, I'd like to know if what he's saying is true there, because he's basically, what he said was, you know, he was the naturally bigger man, um, shit, scan, I hope we don't make my voice go, Crazy. Anyway, you're saying he was the bigger man 
but he, he was, you know, keeping himself, uh, his weight down to be able to fight at super middleweight, which is what a lot of guys do. Uh, you know, some don't, Pacquiao don't. Um, Floyd didn't for a while there. Kovalev wasn't for a while there. Uh, Triple G don't. Um, you know, some guys don't. Some guys do. But he's saying now Ward will be filling out and fighting guys his own size, you know, his natural strength. Um, I just want to know if that's true, you know. But, you know, like I said, man, Paul Smith wasn't Ward's, Ward's uh, first entry into the light heavyweight division, you know. He had uh, a total of three light heavyweight catchweight fights, you know, the Paul Smith one, of course. And then he fought Shelby Pudwill at 172-pound catchweight, light heavyweight catchweight. Um, that was back in 09. I mean, back in 09, he was fighting at 172 pound catch weights. Right? And that was the fight directly before um, the Super Six. You know, right after Pudwell, we entered the Super Six tourney. What a, dude, let's face it, man. It's the truth. With a bunch of fucking B level guys. You know, B level guys, man. Um, 1B plus, 1B plus level guy. Uh, at that time, like, you, you can't. So come on, man. Um, and we'll get to all that. But Alan Green, uh, uh, there's B level guys and Alan Green. Alan Green was fucking C level. C level, though, man. Every step up opponent he ever fucking fought, he lost to. Every single one, you know. Um, the only name opponents Green ever fought was. Miranda, Ward, Glenn Johnson, who knocked his ass out, Kessler, who knocked his ass out, and Blake Caparello. There's five. And Blake Caparello. Never beat one of them. The best win he has, <laughs> it's not even a good win, uh, was probably, if you remember, when Dame Dash tried being a boxing manager, and he had those dudes, uh, they might have been from Harlem. I'm pretty sure they were from New York. I don't, I can't remember though. But Jadon Codrington, um, he was one of the the chin checkers they called them, and um, he had like nine fights against fucking tomato cans. And then Dame, as a manager who don't know shit about boxing, puts this, you know, green as fuck, still hair on the tongue, uh, <laughs> not even that good of a fighter. In with Alan Green. Alan Green iced him. That's his claim to fame. He iced a bum. A hype job bum. And Dame Dash left boxing after that. I mean, it, it was a joke. But that's his claim to fame. That's his best win. Um, a guy 9-0 and who never beat anybody. But that's how he got fame and a name. You know, a big name. Uh, and, and, you know, obviously getting some fights uh, with, you know, guys and getting beat, though. Uh, but in the Super 6, Ward fought. He fought Kessler first, right? Yeah, Kessler, then Green, then Bika. I mean, Green and Bika, give me a fucking break. Abraham and Frotch. Frotch, clearly the best. Um, but all at home. All in Oakland, Cali, and Frotch in Atlantic City. That's it, right? <laughs> Come on, while well, everyone else had to travel everywhere and get their passport stamped like twice, um, if not more. Uh, but look at this man. Kovalev already beat the light heavyweight Frotch. You know, um, Pascal. Who do Frotch and Pascal patent their everything after? Their whole style after? Roy Jones Jr. They both pretend they're <laughs> fucking Roy Jones Jr. Um, you know, they're both, uh, you know, right hand happy. You know, that's their big punch, their right hand. Um, both one dimensional. Um, they're both strong as nails, strong as shit, uh, tough as all hell. Um, big, big power, uh, athletic, um, you know, got good on their feet, 
They're good on their feet, fast on their feet. Um, can crack you uh, from angles. You know, they're like Roy Jones, really. They try to be anyway, right? Pascal's basically the light heavyweight version of Frotch. Face it, he is. You know? Um, what, Frotch has a better name? Just because, you know, he was in a tournament? Uh, if Pascal was in the tournament and lost to Kovalev, would, would his name be better then? I mean, come on. Uh, Pascal was fucking lineal. He was the king of the light heavyweight division, man. Lineal champion, right? I think. And Hopkins, but. but uh, nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all Dawson. Um, anyway. Yeah, that's the light heavyweight version, man. They're like identical, but just Pascal's much bigger and stronger and hits a lot harder. Uh, shit like that. Um, maybe more explosive. But they're, you know, for the divisions, it's basically the super middleweight version of Pascal. It's Frog, right? Um, now, Kovalev fought Pascal. In Pascal's backyard, right, and knocked him out. Then he took the rematch again, and he's taking it in Pascal's backyard, right? Ward turned down the rematch to fight Frotch in his backyard in Nottingham. They might have did it somewhere else, you know, to try to get sixty thou again. But uh, remember, Ward challenged Frotch. He said, you know, oh, you don't want to fight me again? Well, I'll come to your I'll come to your backyard and beat you there. Frotch is a you know, he's a badass, man. He said, Okay, come here, let's do it. I already came to your city. Come on, let's do it right here, right now. They did a stadium that seated at least thirty, and they would have made so much more money in England than they fucking would have in the US. And everyone knows that. But once Frotch said yes, Ward said, Oh, no, never mind. I'm scared I will get robbed. That was the headline. I am scared I'll get robbed. Why'd you challenge him then? I, I can't figure that one out. Why'd you challenge him then? Would you hope he would never talk, say yes or no, and just leave it alone and you could run your mouth? Or did you think he would say no and you could be like, I, I punked him, he's ducking me. He said yes. And then you said, no, I'm scared I'll get robbed. Was Frotch scared to get robbed here? Is Kovalev scared to get robbed anywhere? No. You know, is D. Gill scared to get robbed when he went to Canada? No. You know, was Terrence Crawford scared to go over there? Was Bradley scared to go over there? Was Porter scared to come over here? I mean, come on. You have to do it. I thought you are a world champ, you know? It's crazy, man. Uh, Kovalev, though. Man. Kovalev had that tough fight with Bone at first, and that's how... Well, well, actually, first off, Ward also had a tough fight with Bone. Bone laid Ward down. I mean, hurt him bad. Like, you know, discombobulated him, fucking chicken danced him and everything. Uh, and he, he didn't... He, got, he saved himself, though, and scraped by... Uh, with a decision victory and did not rematch Boone uh, to prove, you know, that was just some mistake. Uh, but Kovalev also had a tough fight with Boone and scraped by with a decision. Uh, however, Kovalev did rematch Boone. Uh, it was the first fight he took after he killed uh, Roman Simakov uh, in seven rounds. Um, R.I.P. Uh, Roman, uh, you know, after that fight, after he killed Roman, uh, a little buzz went around, and that's when Kathy Nuva was thinking of picking him up. So she said, okay, well, he had this tough fight with Boone. Put him in there with Boone again. Because Boone's a tough son of a bitch, man. Put him in with Boone again, and let's see what he does, and then I'll decide from there. He knew this. He goes in with Boone splatters him in two, knocks him out in two rounds, right, when he has something to prove, he's a fucking 
killer for like for real. I, I mean, for real. Um, you know, it's crazy, right? Oh man. But Ward's best opponent is clearly Frost, right? And you can put the light heavyweight version as Pascal for Kovalev. This is where I'm gonna do a little resume comparison, right? That's the best comparison I can say for Frotch is Pascal. And I think that's fair. Let me you guys can let me know if that's fair. I think that's fair. The light heavyweight division when Pascal went was in it was much tougher than the super middleweight division when Frotch was in it. You know, Frotch was able to pick some fights and things like that. Um not that he was ducking anyone or, you know, cherry picking or anything, but he had just some guys he could beat stylistically. You know, Pascal was taking on anyone and had some tough ass, you know, tough guys up there. Um, but Ward's the next best, next best opponent on his resume after Frotch is who? Kessler? Abraham? One of the two. I, at 60, you know, Abraham was a badass at 60. I'll give him that. Um, even though he ducked Triple G, but I'd say Kessler, you know, because I don't care what, you know, I don't know, I'll get to it, man. I think Kessler, uh, Kessler, you know, well, well, who's Kovalev's, you know, light heavyweight Kessler? Think about it, you know, um, there's a couple people I thought of, but. The one that really stands out to me is Nathan Cleverly. You know, he just had that really good fight with Fofara. Hell, a hell of a good fight. But when Kovalev fought him, he was undefeated. He was 26-0 and 0, um, on his climb and getting his shot against Kovalev. Um, and Cleverly, Cleverly had beaten Carl Murat, uh, the best name on Sullivan Barrera's Whole entire record, you know, um, Ward's plus one X opponent. Uh, he beat Carl Marat, uh, Tony Bellu, Tony Bellu, fucking badass. Um, Najib Muhammad, Kovalev's last opponent, he beat him first. Um, Tommy Carpency and Robin Krasniki, was five. Um, you know, he beat a lot of guys to get there, you know, decent. Decent, you know, journeyman contender type guys. He was unbeaten, twenty six and zero. Now, you put one hundred and sixty eight <coughs> pound Kessler in the ring with uh, one hundred and seventy five pound, you know, weighing in day before one hundred seventy five pound Nathan Cleverly. Who the hell do you think is going to win? I'm talking from back then, that Kessler to the the, the Cleverly that Kovalev for. Who do you think is going to win? Cleverly's going to beat the shit out of him. He's going to beat the shit out of him. You know, uh, it's just the way it is, you know. Good big man always beats the good, the, the, the good little man. You know, it's just the way it is. That's why there is weight classes. However, you know, that's the point. Kovalev was very small. You know, he, he wasn't fighting at, you know, wasn't no 188 pounder yet. He was fighting couple pounds above the weight limit while you know the other guys warden everyone is packing the weight on coming up near a buck 80 you know I think it's, you know plus um, Kovalev knocked cleverly out and, and you know that's a big thing uh, but who did Kessler beat before Ward you know Calzaghi already whooped him boxed his ears off and beat him cleanly, didn't have to foul the shit out of him to get a victory, and I'm not saying Ward couldn't have beat Kessler clean I'm just saying he didn't he should have had fucking points deducted and if he continued to have been DQ'd but, you know Calzaghi already laid the blueprint on how to beat him clean uh, even though Ward chose to fucking foul his way to victory with the help of fucking Jack Reese a California referee, I might add, um, and it being in Oakland, you know. But who Kessler beat before Ward? Seriously, he only beat two guys: Labrado Andrade and Anthony Mundane. That's it. So yeah, I think Cleverly alone is a 
much better win than fucking Kessler. And like I said, especially since fucking Warden Kessler went to the cards and Kovalev iced cleverly in four. Big fucking difference. Big difference. You know? And cleverly would have beat the shit out of Kessler and Kovalev just iced. Iced cleverly. And Cove went and Ward went twelve with Kessler. You know, why couldn't he he should have boof, destroyed Kessler? But he had to file his way to the cards. Who's Ward's next best opponent? Abraham. Has to be, right? Well, you know, Abraham was nice at 160. Did a lot of good things, fought a lot of you know good names and everything. But from 160 up, what can what Abraham ever do? You know, what Abraham ever do? You know, Abraham the, the, you know, Ward's next best opponent is Abraham, who had just moved up uh, to 168 right before the Super Six, then joins the Super Six. And we, we, if you were watching him fight, you can remember watching him and seeing how poorly he was fighting at 68 compared to how good he was at 60. You know, he just couldn't make the weight. Um, he, he shouldn't. 168 was never his division, but luckily for him, he was able after the tournament to grab up the WBO title, go hide out in Germany, and fucking hold it hostage. Fight, fight some decent fighters, but no one good. He's staying completely out of the, the game, the mix. He ain't trying to unify. You know, he's you know, he might be fighting Martinez now, and I think Martinez will beat him actually, so he's probably gonna lose that belt now. But he's fighting guys like Paul Smith and Stieglitz and Chile, yeah, you know. Um, we're good fighters in their own right, it's not world beaters, you know. So, yeah, that's you know, the uh, <laughs> oh, I forgot. <laughs> Before Ward fought him, he had just lost two of his last three fights. You know, he was on a losing streak. Two of his last three fights. Yeah, that's his best win. Arthur Abraham was nice at 160, like I said. But he, was, he did duck Triple G for a minute there. And the best win Arthur Abraham ever had, in my opinion, is when he iced, uh, when he iced Jermaine Taylor. But that's also after Taylor had just lost three of his last four, and two of which was by brutal KO um, at the hands of uh, Pavlik and Froch. Right, they both brutally KO'd his ass, and then Abraham brutally KO'd his ass. Um, you know, so, yeah. You know, I mean, come on, man. Abraham ain't nothing special. Like, what the fuck? Like, what? <laughs> nothing special at all. Um, you know, and, and then the big thing is, you know, even after he, those are the best fighters he ever fucking beat. Best fighters he ever beat. Chad Dawson, no, 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 no. I'll get to that. They, he, no. Um, he might as well have been a scrub. You, you drain him down that far, might as well have been a scrub, and I'll get to that. But first, I'll talk about, those are the best fighters he ever fought. And after Frotch, the number, you know, Ward was champ now. He was a Ring Magazine lineal champion. And the number one Ring Magazine contender and IBF champion, I mean, Ward should have never let his belt fucking go, and he should have fucking fought Durrell. Instead of ducking him, and he could you know, ended up unifying. Um, but Boutte was the number one ring magazine super middleweight. The number one. And Ward was champion. And remember he said, Boutte don't deserve to fight me. He has to fight Frotch first. And if he beats Frotch, maybe I'll fight him then. <laughs> Can you believe that? Could you could you fucking believe that? You know, for the Ward fanboys out there, Triple G is what two I think in the ring, and number three is Jacobs or Saunders. Imagine if Triple G said, "No, no, no, Jacobs has to go fight Lemieux, and if he beats him, maybe I'll fight him." And you wouldn't give him shit, huh? You would you'd give him no shit at all, huh? 
I mean, do you guys, do you Ward fanboys even know his past? Do you? You know, it's ridiculous. Boutique's the number one motherfucking cha challenger, and he said he don't deserve it. You know, and he, it's not that he didn't deserve it, because he beat a lot of guys. You know, he, he beat, uh, he beat Bika. What, he, uh, uh, Bika only won two fucking rounds the whole fight. Look how tough of a fight fucking Ward had with Bika. You know, uh, Bute was, had a field day with him. Bika won like two rounds at most. Um, he beat Lebrado Andrade, one of the, the Kessler's best fucking win before, uh, um, Ward fought him. You know, uh, he also beat Edison Miranda and Jean Paul Mendy. Forgot about Jean Paul Mendy and the, 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 um, you know, first of all, he knocked out Miranda in three rounds and he fucking knocked out, uh, Jean Paul Mendy in four rounds. Uh, he actually fought Lebrado Andrade twice now. I, I actually remembered that. The first one went to a decision. I don't remember what, if it was, it had to be unanimous. Um, but they rematched, iced them. It was like fifth round, I think. Iced them. Um, but the best one, and one of my favorite fighters of all time, is Glenn Johnson. Glenn Johnson, who Ward should have fought. That would have been a great fight to see Ward and Glenn Johnson. But Boutte got to him first. And one twentyed his ass, won every single fucking round against one of the greatest fighters of that time, like period. One of the greatest fighters of that time. Um, but yeah, he don't deserve a shot or nothing. He's only beaten you know everybody out there except Froch. You know it was ridiculous. Uh, you 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 fought other guys who, who did less. What the fuck did Edwin Rodriguez ever do? You know? Please, give me a break. And then, and then, but when he fought Edwin Rodriguez, for some of you who don't know his past, he was in negotiations to fight DeGel. He was supposed to fight DeGel that night instead of Edwin Rodriguez, by the way. <clears throat> what did he do? He pulled out of the negotiations for Edwin Rod or for He pulled out of the negotiations for James DeGel. And jumped at the number one contender for one of his belts, uh, uh, Edwin Rodriguez. And that's how far back this Duck and Gale shit goes. Now, go look. You know, tell me, Edwin Rodriguez is a fucking scrub. Do any of you even know who he is? Have you ever even seen Ward fight him? You know, he's a scrub. Did you ever fucking, did you see him fight after Ward? Did you see him fight before Ward? Did you ever hear of him before Ward fought him? Doubt it. No, you didn't. Um, and, you know, if you think he's anything and you think I'm lying, go watch him fight. Go, better yet, go look at his resume and see if you, I bet 99% of you Ward fucking fans won't know one name on his resume other than Andre Ward. <clears throat> and the best fighters you think he ever fought, click on their resumes and see that all their wins, it's all padded record bums. Bums. The guy never did shit, but he fights him instead of DeGale. Bullshit. But anyway, after Arthur Abraham, who is there? Who is there? Tell me. Fucking... Ser seriously, there's no one. Green? Give me a break. I already exposed his ass. Bika? Really? Do I even have to get into that? And it's Dawson, right? Dawson. Dawson was a badass at 75, right? But drained down the whole division, he's nothing. He was nothing. You know, we saw him take monstrous shots from Pascal at 75, then can't even take a light-punching super middleweight um, for anything. You know, getting smashed with one punch and dropping, knocked around the ring. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's not because he doesn't have a lack of brain fluid to protect his brain from bouncing off his skull or nothing like that. Because he got drained so far. Yeah. Um, 
you know, and the worst part is this, when Ward had already fought twice at light heavyweight catchweights. He already fought twice at light heavyweight catchweights, but wouldn't do it for Dawson. You know, even though Ward could have won the fucking lineal championship and a WBC belt, but he could have won the lineal championship. You know, he fought Shelby fucking Pudwill at 172 right before the tournament, but then after the tournament, he won't fight Dawson at like 72 or something. I mean, you want to fight the guy. I mean, meet in the middle. Do something. Don't drain him down a whole division. Could you fuck... Would, would you give any credit to Triple G if he made... When they were thinking about fighting Ward, would you... If Triple G said, come down to 60, and Ward did, and then Triple G knocked him out, you would give no credit to Triple G for beating Ward. Don't dare say you would. Don't fucking dare say you would. Nah, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't have either. You know, it's because you wouldn't wouldn't deserve any credit. Um, look, man. If Ward so at that time Ward was what people were saying he was the best fighter on the planet. Like there was the argument who's better, him or Floyd. I mean, I'm not even a big Floyd fan, but I think it's clear as fucking day that Floyd was a better fighter. It was Packy. I was fucking ten times the fighter Ward ever was. You know, give me a break. Sugar, uh, real quick thing. Sugar Ray Robinson was a fucking middleweight, right? You know, welterweight, middleweight. Um, started lightweight, really. It was middle. We'll just say he was a middleweight. That's where he was fighting at. But past his prime, middleweight past his prime, Ward was in his prime, his peak, actually. And Sugar Ray was past his prime. Middleweight, not super, 160 jumps the whole way up to 175 and fought a much better light heavyweight champion than Chad Dawson, Joey Maxim, one of the greatest light heavyweights of all time. Of all time. Schools him. Only don't school him. If it was 12 round fight back then, he won. Lineal champ, bam. Um, the only thing is, he, he literally, they had to replace the referee in, I think, the ninth or 10th round, and he went down in, I believe, the 13th round. I think it was 10 to 1, 13, yeah, it would have been the 13th round. Uh, and he exhausted him, and he wasn't faking it. He pushed hard for rounds after that, and he totally scored him. You know, like, I went 10 to 1, that was the scores, you know, um. They had him winning 10, 10 of the rounds, Maxim only winning two, and one of them even. You know, he could have lost every round after that and still won cleanly, you know. Uh, but he had the move, you know, that was still take uh, exertion. And, you know, and when he was done, I mean, after the fight, you know, a couple of days later, he had bubbles. He had boils on his skin from... Uh, you know, the, 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 they said from the sweat trying to get out, and it was, you know, coming up, filling up under his skin. I mean, he really killed himself, man. Like, severe heat exhaustion. Severe. Um, but Ward wouldn't even do a catch weight with Dawson like he did previously with two opponents. You know, like I said, Pudwill, 172. He did it with Pudwill. You know? Right before he entered the Super 6. So he would fight Pudwill at 172, but wouldn't fight Dawson at 172. No, he only wanted to fight Dawson if Dawson would kill himself to come down. So that win gets no credit at all. Like I said, would you give credit to fucking Triple G if he brought Ward down to 160 and smacked him? No, you wouldn't. So don't dare say Ward gets credit for that win. Um, but think about this. Ward was willing to fight Pudwill at 72, then wouldn't fight Dawson at 72. Then Ward was willing and challenged Sergio Martinez to fight at 164 but wouldn't fight Triple G at 164. Kind of funny, huh? And considering that people call Triple G the duck. 
talk about fucking bias, uh, some fucking hypocrites, you know. The Ward beat those guys only. That's it. Those are the guys Ward beat. You know, but Kovalev beat light heavyweights. You know, light heavyweights. Uh, and look, and remember, there's not much of a size difference between these guys. Um, it's like this, right? Kodo, great fighter, great name, great fighter, great name to have on your resume, great fighter, right? But he has no business fighting someone weighing 175 pounds or more. No business, right? Could you imagine, you know, Kodo and the coming in at whatever weight he wants and David Lemieux being able to enter the ring at, you know, 175 pounds. David Lemieux would have beat him from pillar to post and knocked him the fuck out. If Triple G had the way in, you know, had, not, had to just enter the ring under 175 pounds. He would have entered around 170 anyway, but, and Kodo could come in whatever he wanted. What do you think would have happened? He would have beat the fuck out of him, pillar to post, knocked him out under six rounds, right? Canelo goes 12 rounds with him and barely fucking wins. Barely wins. But that's somehow a better name. That's a better win on Canelo's resume than Lemieux on Triple G's resume. Why? Because Cotto's a name? The guy has no business fighting there. Jacobs would have beat the fucking shit. Uh, Murray would have beat the fucking shit out of uh, Cotto. Because he has no business fight guys that size. And Cotto struggles with him and barely wins. Some people think he lost. I don't, but he barely won. 7-5. Barely won. And that's somehow a better win than David Lemieux on Triple G's resume. Think about it. Triple G versus Canelo. What would happen? Most people think it's a toss-up or Lemieux wins. Very few pick Canelo. Triple G would, I mean, Lemieux would probably beat the hell out of uh, Canelo. You know, I've talked about it before. How, how's he going to beat Lemieux? So, you know, you really got to think about it. How the fuck Lemieux is a much tougher fighter. I mean, if, if every one of those guys demolishes, you know, if Lemieux and Triple G just flat out demolish uh, Cotto, but Canelo goes 12 rounds and barely wins, then those guys versus Canelo would probably fucking destroy Canelo, but somehow Co like Cotto, Cotto is a better win. You see what I'm saying? It makes no sense. You have to, like, really look at it. Cotto, Canelo is a fucking 175-pound guy fighting little-ass dudes. You know? Triple G is a 175-pound, 170-pound dude fighting bigger guys. That would beat the fucking shit out of anybody Cotto ever fought. You know, even Lemieux versus Floyd would be very good. I think I, I think Floyd would get de demolished. I do. I think he would. At 160. You see what I'm saying? You really got to check these. You know, you got to understand the uh, the dynamics. People somehow just don't comprehend that. You know, they think, well, he, Cotto, he was a middleweight. No, he wasn't. Every middleweight would have smashed his ass. Every good middleweight. But Canelo couldn't. So how's that a good win? How's that a good win? You know, come on. So that that that's my point is that the Kovalev be like light heavyweights, Pascal, Hopkins, unbeaten Blake Caparello, unbeaten Cedric Agnew. That's the fight to let me know he was gonna beat Hopkins because I saw everything I needed in that fight. And don't say Hopkins was old because you can go type in fucking. Uh, prediction videos, and every fucking buddy was saying, every one of you channels and everybody out there was picking Hopkins to fucking school Kovalev. That was the word I heard all the time. Hopkins is going to school him. 
I picked Kovalev. I didn't pick him to 120 his ass, but I picked him. You know, I said once I saw the 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 Cedric Agnew fight, I said this guy, as long as his stamina holds up, because remember he never went many rounds after that. I think he only went eight rounds before that fight. I was seeing if if he if his stamina holds up, he wins. Uh, Kovalev, you know, and he did it. You know, he won. Unbeaten Nathan cleverly, um, you know Campillo, who good fucking fighter just gets robbed all the time. Um, Campillo, they she, Kovalev beat Campillo right after Campillo got robbed by Tavares Cloud. So you know really you know Campillo beat Cloud. Um, Kovalev fucking KO'd every one of them except Hopkins. And you know what? He could have KO'd Hopkins. He just didn't. He played it safe just because you knew how important that win was and Kovalev wasn't throwing shit back. He was just boxing with him, you know, because he need he knew he knew that he needed that win for, you know, his future. Um, so he just played it safe. But you saw the moment B Op like tried to be like and stick his tongue out, Kovalev went fucking ape shit on him. Smacked the fuck out of him and almost knocked him out right there. You know, Kovalev was you know Hopkins was lucky to survive that shit. Imagine if he did that in the eighth round, ninth round, tenth round. Let Kovalev was you know, gonna cut him out of there. He was Hopkins would have been done, you know, but he didn't, you know. But real quick about um, this matchup, man. You know, Sergey can take a good shot, and Andre don't have power. I mean, this is what John David Jett. John David Jackson is saying that Sergey can take a real good punch and Andre don't have power. So he said, you know, can Andre nullify Cove's power somehow and I'll point him? I mean, I don't know how much of a how much punishment Ward can take. Uh, we'll have to find out. He also said, you know, he can't hurt Kovalev to keep Cove off of him. So how's he going to handle Cove coming at him for every minute of all 12 rounds? That's a good question. You know, and he said, uh, what else did he say? He said, um, he said Ward has a bit of a suspect chin because of the Boone. Uh, Boone thing, he said, if a 160-pound Boone can drop you, what do you think fucking Kovalev's going to do? Uh, and, you know, the Ward can't hold and maul, because you just can't do it with Kovalev. He's too strong and toss you off, and, you know, and you're going to get fucking hurt trying to come in. Uh, and he said, so Ward is going to have to fight this fight. Like, stand and fight. None of that inside maul and fucking wrestling shit. Plus, Kov wrestles. <laughs> He's going to just womp on Kovalev, or womp on Ward if Ward wants to come in on him. It's ridiculous. I mean... He's going to have to fight this fight, which is going to make it a much better fight, too. Uh, Kovalev's bigger and stronger, man. Uh, better chin, better puncher. He fights taller. Um, he's longer and rangy. Uh, you know, and when he fights tall, you know, Ward likes to crouch a lot. And, you know, uh, sneak a jab or a, or a straight right. Um, sometimes he'll stand straight up. But either way, Ward is going to be... And you Kovalev, I mean, it's going to be standing straight up, zinging right on him, beelining on him. Where are you? Boom, right here. Boom, boom, boom. Every time you try to come in, you know, whap. So, what's, what, you know, it's going to be hard for him to come in, man. It is. You now, and plus, Kovalev is so rangy. He gets great extension on his shots. Great extension. And that's where a lot of that power comes from, too. But he even got power on short shots, so it's just heavy-handed, man. He must have a fucking brick in his glove. You know what I'm saying? But his jab alone breaks bones, man. His jab alone has broken bones. Two bones. Think about it. Broken bones. What the fuck? Ward's going to have to eat that shit all night. Bang, 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 bang. I'm going to end this real quick. This video is way long. But I'm going to say, like my boy says, right? Uh, in boxing, you're either getting better or getting worse. All right, and Ward only fighting two scrubs in three years, um, <laughs> and one drain dead fighter the year before. So really, three scrubs in four years. Is that getting you better? 
while Kovalev's fighting the best opposition he can, you know, multiple times a year. Steel sharpens steel. Kovalev is sharpening his tools on steel. What is Ward sharpening his on? Fucking aluminum. And how much Ward admitted. You know, Ward has said he's not the same fighter. So question is, yeah, how much has he lost? How much has he lost? And does he have enough left to compete with Kovalev? That's, that's the question. And we're not going to know until we see Ward in with, you know, someone. I'm not even going to talk about Sullivan Barrera because, you know, shout out Diplomats, uh, 978 Diplomats. He did that video showing all the tweets, and it really don't look like Ward is even going to fight him. He straight said, I, I don't have a contract. Um, I ain't got no money for you. You ain't getting rich off of us. So it looks like that fight ain't even going to happen now, man. Um... I'm going to be optimistic and hope it does. You know, I'd rather see Ward fight other guys, but a Barrera is one of the guys I'd like to see him fight. He's in the list of guys I'd like to see him fight. So Barrera's fine by me. Uh, I just don't want to see him pick. You know, Barrera's 23 on box rec, and that's about right where he belongs. He's in that 20 to 25 range. So... He can't fight anyone worse than Barrera. Um, not that Barrera's bad. I'm saying he can't fight anyone lower than that. Barrera's the best at that that rank right there. He has the talent. He just hasn't beaten enough guys to get up higher. You know, it happens. But Ward has to either fight Barrera or someone better. He can't go lower. Right? Or else we'll know nothing. Because he's going to, I have him beaten Barrera. So, if he goes worse than Barrera, we don't learn nothing. Because he can fight all the Paul Smiths he wants. He's You can look like a million bucks fighting Paul Smith. Let me cherry pick who I box on a video. And I will look like a million bucks. Every promoter will be like, wow, that kid's good. And in reality, I'm, I'm no, I'm fucking 34 years old and can't go more than fucking five rounds so, <laughs> you know but you let me cherry pick someone from the gym and I'll knock them the fuck out in two rounds you know, you know so it's it's silly like that I don't want to see him fighting some a cherry pick that you know of course he'll look good on but because they're not doing anything they're not testing him you know Sullivan Barrera will be a test for different reasons even though I still got to win and he'll be a test so if you don't fight Sullivan he better fight someone at least better. You know, sort of like if Thurman don't fight Porter, he better at least fight someone equal or better. So, yeah, I mean, Ward better fight someone equal or better. Um, I don't know. But that's what I want to know from you guys. Do you think Ward has enough left? And I know most of you are going to say, we just don't know because we haven't seen him. Uh, but, you know, from your... I know flat out, if you ever boxed before... You take time off. I took a year off one time. It was it was a hard coming back. Hard it was. Um, I I only boxed for like a year and a half after that. I was done after that. I was a bit. I was like you know, 20, 24, 25. But um, it was it was tough. It was it was tough, man. You gotta stay in that fucking groove to to compete. You know. Um, and with him fighting once a year, or not even once a year, for the last four years, and against Scrubs, yeah, come on, man. He's nowhere near what he was. Nowhere near. And if he is, he's one of the greatest athletes I've ever seen. So that's why I want to see him with someone. Uh, is he great? If if he is, it'll it'll be shown. And if he's not, it'll be shown. But let me know your thoughts and opinions on you know, anything I talked about, man. Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Peace.